It's time to step into the Coming Out Lounge, a cool, safe space to be true to your sexual self. With your host, Rick Clemens. Rick has helped hundreds of people come out of the closet, and now each week he's bringing you cool insights for loving and accepting yourself, boosting your self-confidence, and living a guilt-free, purpose-filled life on the other side of the closet doors. Cuddle up with yourself and get ready for heartwarming coming out stories, ideas for living authentically, and tips for being fully self-expressed. Now here's your host, Coming Out Coach Rick. Hey, 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 closet busters, you know what time it is. It's that time once again to stop your closet dwelling. Come on, get out of the closet, and I want you to step out, step up, and, you know, come on, let's just step into living our truth. But, you know, sometimes for most of us, living that truth, God dang it, it's it's really hard because, well, most of us are living a story. Now, don't get me wrong, most of us love a really good story. In fact, most of us love to create stories. You know, those stories, the ones that sometimes get us into trouble and the stories that don't get us into trouble, but we all seem to love stories. And stories can sometimes cause us to believe we can't and shouldn't and aren't supposed to be who we are. But what does that do when you start to listen to those things and what does it do about helping you want to live an authentic life and be authentically in the world? Well, I'm really glad I proposed that question to you and threw that question out to you today because today we've got a little help from a friend of mine who's also a fellow coach. His name is Ray Hippolyte, and we're going to take you on a, well, between him and I, we're going to take you on a Ray Nuvation to help you fully own your story and accept who you are in the LGBT world. Find that LGBTQ self so that you can attract everything you want in life, maybe even including the right kind of soulmate. So why did I bring Ray to this show? Well, first of all, because he's just, well, he's one handsome guy, which you'll see when you kind of look at his face on the show page. He's a handsome guy from Haiti, and he's going to share some of his life as a coming through the closet doors as a Haitian man. But his looks are only matched by his beautiful abilities to really help people as they go through things and he's done a lot of work in health and relationship and being a coach. He's also a ultra high frequency energy healing master, as well as a peace process master. And I can't imagine anybody better to really guide us through stories and make peace with it than my friend Ray. Welcome to the podcast, Ray. Thank you, Rick, for such a nice introduction. You gave I'm it not, all to not, me. Not even more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gave me all the good stuff. I mean, I loved it. Yeah, as I read through all the information provided for me, I'm like, I really just, I love everything you do. So let's kind of just, you know, let's dive right in. Let's get your own personal story, being a Haitian man. And, you know, it's definitely not the easiest scenario would be my guess, being Haitian and being gay. Now, looking back, it's... I'm grateful that I am because it's amazing on how when you own your story, you become bulletproof from what other people think. But the process to get there has been a painful one. And it's quite interesting when I revisit my past and growing up in Haiti, being gay, where it's beyond homophobia, it's graphic homophobia, where no one can comprehend what it is to even think about being with a man. Right. So coming to the States and coming out was in itself uh, an entire process where I have to go to therapy and now contracting the HIV virus was another transformational experience, which mm. I almost killed myself. And now that's why I think it's so important to teach people the importance of owning their story and owning their truth so they can set themselves free. But I love what you said about owning your and it helping to make you bulletproof because, man, that's just, first of all, that's a great tweet in and of itself for this podcast today. But when you can really wrap yourself in your story in a really beautiful way of this is who I am and this is how I'm meant to be in the world and this is what I'm for and who I stand for and all these different things. When you can do that, then it does really, truly make you bulletproof. It makes you so much more able to just be beautifully in life, I guess would be the words I would put around it. You can really be who you're meant to be in this life that you've been put on this earth, you know, and have it for the short time that we do. So as a, you know, living in Haiti, I mean, were there any... Excuse me? 
were there any role models or anybody that, you know, while you were in Haiti really gave you insights to what it was like to be gay or where you pretty much felt like you were abandoned and on your own in that world? I was abandoned on my own in that world. <laughs> it's in the U.S. where I was exposed for the first time to people being gay and living openly about sexuality that I learned about the importance of really being myself. Mm-hmm. And also that innate desire to always want to be me and to be happy has always made me very curious on how to find the tools and the classes that would enable me to get there. Mm. That was an important aspect of it. I've always been on a search for meaning, a search for truth. And right now, the person I am today is, thank God that I've done all of that work. But in Haiti, the only person that I can recall that was gay when I grew up was a guy that was a ballerina and he was a drug addict. So I had no one to identify with as far as being gay. (laughs) You know, it's interesting that you bring that up, Ray, because as you were saying that, and you had told me that, you know, prior in our pre-show discussions, but it's interesting how those kind of quote stereotypes or what people think is, oh, okay, so his only role model was this gay male ballerina who was a drug addict. Suddenly... In your own mind, in some way, I'm sure that's like, okay, well, that's what gay is, is that's what it looks like. And I think oftentimes people on the outside who aren't living as a gay or lesbian individual, they put these stereotypes on us and don't realize that, well, we actually have probably put these on ourselves at different points in time in our life until we realize, no, that isn't what it means for me to be gay. That's what it meant for that person to be gay. But that doesn't mean that Ray has to be a ballet dancer, drug addict, da da da, to be gay. So what was it like when you finally started really realizing, okay, this is what it means for me to be gay. This is Ray's version of gay. What was the big difference for you? The big difference for me was to really start shifting my perspective on how I saw myself. Mm. Because, you know, being bullied as a child, you are dwelt into shame. And instead of burying those feelings, I started addressing them one by one. And by doing so, it enabled me to really start living a life that is authentic to who I am. I'll never forget an instance where I was in a room where my entire family was there. And at that time, I was dating a guy, and my boy was not accepted in the family. Mm-hmm. So I have a big family, so we were spending a lot of time together. And at one point, it was late in the evening, and I said, I have to go back home. And my mom said, so why are you going back home? And I said, because I have to go meet my partner. And she replied, so are you the man? Are you the woman? Mm-hmm. And I said, mom, how could there be a woman and a man when there's too many involved? That's why we're going behind closed doors. Right. <laughs> and it's interesting on how she put, she referred to me as me being the man or the woman. Sure. <laughs> but this is what we humans do. In fact, I was just having this conversation a couple of days ago with someone about how it's so quote, necessary for us to have the label to put on something so that we can, you know, understand, number one, sometimes those labels and those pictures that we have to have painted for us really have nothing to do with the real picture. It's like, well, are you the woman or the man? Well, what does that have to do with anything? I'm still your son. I'm Ray. And I happen to be in love with a man. But the rest of that has really no bearing on how shouldn't have quote, I'm going to say quote, big air quotes here, folks. You shouldn't have any bearing on how you're perceived in the world, but yet we as gays and lesbians face this all the time. That's true. And we do it among ourselves also. Oh, God, yes. Oh, yes. We- <laughs> if you were close to me right now, folks, we're doing this long, long ways apart from each other, but I would be reaching out and high-fiving Ray for that one because we do <laughs> do this to ourselves all the time. So true. What gay people do not realize is they've been gifted the gift of to be teachers of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, we have to really show compassion toward ourselves and others. That's so important. That is so important. And my mom, for instance, she's the most important person in my life. Mm -hmm. And her coming out process has been very slow. And when she found out that I was gay, she almost 
committed suicide. Mm. And that same person right now, she thinks she likes my partner more than she likes me, <laughs> which makes my life very easy. But I had to separate myself from her and build the strength from within to love myself unconditionally. And from there, really know that she has to learn how to accept the fact that I'm gay and accept where she was at in her coming out process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought this up, Ray, because this is something I talk about in my book, Frankly, My Dear, I'm Gay, about this self-acceptance. It's so vital that you dig into this space of it's, it goes along with the owning your story, but it's about digging into that space and really loving yourself and, and doing the self-care that you need to do for a couple of reasons. And I'd love to get your perspective on this, too. but the couple of reasons I always put forward is number one, kind of in the same way that RuPaul would say, if you can't love yourself, who the hell is going to love you? But that's number one reason right there. Number yeah. two, if you aren't secure enough in loving yourself, then you're going to project out that feeling. You're going to give off that aura that, okay, I don't love myself enough. So it's open game for anybody to say, well, then you shouldn't be gay because blah, 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 blah. If you can't stand, you know, solidly in yourself, it's going to be much more difficult to do this when others come up against you and say, oh, you can't be that. I think sometimes we forget that. That is solidly. so true. Yeah. Yeah. So you are out of Haiti. You're now living in the States and have you as a man of color and of, you know, other culture, have you found it difficult in the gay community at times to be a man of color? I have not experienced that much difficulty in the United States being a man of color, but being gay in Haiti was very difficult. Oh, I'm sure. I guess I'm always curious because I know the cultural bounds. I mean, I get it about Haiti because you've shared so beautifully with me privately and then now how, as you're sharing now. But I always wonder, you know, is this transition over? Because I know I've had friends who are individuals of color and, man, sometimes they get a really bad rap in the community. And it's like, wait, time out. How come are you doing this to them? You're gay too. And just because the color of their skin doesn't dictate that they should be any different or they should be treated different just because they're one of your gay brothers and sisters. And, and so that's why I asked the question because I have seen it numerous times where, Oh, well you're Asian or, you know, you're Hispanic or, you know, African American or Haitian or whatever it may be. And so suddenly there's this twist of, okay, now they just get that layered on top of them and it makes it even harder. It is. It is hard. Well, think about it, Rick. I am Haitian. I am black. I speak a foreign language right. and I am HIV positive. There's not an adjective behind my name where I walk into any room where I'm not going to be judged. Mm. And if I were to focus on what other people think of me, right. I would be right now probably a big drug addict. Oh, I'm sure. And that's why it's so important to really learn on how to be you, to step into, to start living that relationship with your authentic self. And from that place, show up in the world by declaring who you are. And there's a healing process that needs to take place. And I always tell my clients, there's three responses that you're going to get. Either people are going to be engaged, either they're going to be neutral, or they're going to be repelled. So you might as well be you. It could be Mother Teresa. It could be the president of the U.S. You're always going to get those three responses. So you might as well be you. Right. And it's amazing when you get to that point where you let go of all of the fears associated with what the environment, the domesticated environment has taught you to be. And you step into those shoes of who you are. Wow. Magic happens. Absolutely. I want to go through those again because you just delivered some really powerful wisdom there. So the first one is you can be repelled. Yes. The second one is what was number two? Engaged, repelled or neutral. Okay. So engaged, repelled or neutral. I think this is so powerful in the coming out process as well as in life as <laughs> Just in life, you know, as a coach, a speaker and, you know, my podcast and all these different things, I can't tell you how many times in my own life I can overlay what you just said and go, oh, yeah, I can either be accepted, repelled or people are going to feel neutral. And 
I think it's individual how you react to those things. You know, obviously it's going to be different for each of us. But I think when you can just be in the space of it just is what it is, I don't think most people realize not only does that take a lot of the garbage away (laughs) because you're just (laughs) like, it's okay. You know, it can be just okay. In fact, I was working with a client this morning and they said, well, I guess that would be fine. And I could tell by the way they use the word fine that they weren't fine with that. And I said, so what's wrong with being fine? Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, the way you said that tells me that there's something that you have created a belief or, you know, an understanding around that fine isn't what you're supposed to be. Well, no, you're supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be really great or really good. I said, but what if in this instance, in this situation we're talking about, if fine is the best it can be? What if fine were the best in this situation? Yeah. And they got really quiet. And I said, so what's going on for you right now? And they said, you know, I've never looked at it from that perspective. Yeah. I said, well, how does that feel to actually go? It's okay to just be fine. It's okay to be just okay too. That's another one. I think a lot of people don't often go, oh, well, it's okay. As soon as somebody says, oh, I'm okay. The first thing a lot of people go, well, okay, well, what's going on? No, I'm Okay. There's nothing that needs to be done. So it's just interesting. <laughs> I love that you brought this up because I think, you know, the acceptance, the rejection, and the neutral are just so, they're so powerful in the coming out journey. Extremely, extremely. And in your own, you know, I'm going to bring it up since you brought it up. I'm sure that there's your own journey you had to go through in those arenas as a man who is HIV positive as well. Oh my God, it, it, HIV has been one of my biggest teachers. And I'll never forget when I came out about my HIV, I spent 30 days hibernating, not even wanting to go out because I thought I was living disease. Mm. And me, that person that loves to establish goals, you know, I said, Ray, enough of that. Right. So the first thing I did, I registered to take a course at Dale Carnegie, where I said I was going to come out about my HIV publicly, which I did. That was a very healing for me to do so. And now I finally came out to my mom about my HIV. She was the only person that didn't know. And that was December. Rick, you wouldn't believe it. After telling her, there was an energy shift that happened in me. And my business started to blossom Mm -hmm. because HIV is part of my story. HIV is part of who I am. And whatever happens in our lives, we are here to learn a lesson from it, bad or good, and become it, live it, teach it, and give it back. And that's why I love what I do is to give people the opportunity to experience what it's like to own their story and to love others unconditionally, because that's where freedom is. And wow, The reason why I'm bringing that up is that the second that you own your story, you become you, everybody else responds in a very different way. It's magical. It's magical. I'm so glad. I mean, I'm just sitting here just quietly listening to this because you just shared such a beautiful lesson of what can happen when you do own your story and how you can be with yourself and embrace what is. And it's just amazing how these things do integrate. I was just on the phone with a friend of mine right before we started taping the show. And we were talking about, you know, how one thing in life impacts the next thing and the next thing, you know, one area, maybe your career and then your finances and then your sex life and then your relationship and then your physical well-being. And we were kind of batting some ideas around because he was having a rather challenging situation with a client. And I said, so what if you put all those different buckets into perspective for the client and said, so which of these buckets out of all the buckets that you brought up, which of these buckets is most important to you? Mm -hmm. What happened? And the client said, well, my physical well-being." And then of course, then he said, and if I, asked you to step further into taking care of that physical well-being, what might happen? And he just picked one of the other random areas. He goes, what might happen to your finances? Yeah. And the client got really quiet and he goes, I'm not sure, but now I'm curious. 
And I think it's a beautiful way that you painted the picture. I think we all kind of know it. It's kind of built in that everything's connected for whatever freaking reason. <laughs> we as humans, <laughs> we love to go, okay, well, this has to go over here and this has to go over here and this has to be here. It's all part of it. And the way you beautifully said, you know, my HIV is part of me. It's just part of who I am. It's the same thing. And for those of you that are listening that may be really struggling with this, this thought process, whether you're HIV or positive or not, is not the point. It's the thought process that your gayness or your being a lesbian or a bisexual or a transgender, it's part of you. It's your story. And to try mm-hmm. to go put it over somewhere else is detrimental to your own well-being, but it also gives other people the right to say, see, you can go put this over here. This isn't something that has to be part of who you are. It is a part of who we are. It's part of who we are as human beings. Exactly, exactly. But we are all so domesticated to think of each other based on the features and benefits perspective. We never ask people, who are you? We always ask, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Is the who we are that we have to be more curious about. Because by sharing who we are, we share our essence. We share our vulnerability. Mm. We share the stories that shape us into who we are, what, what we stand for in life. And by doing so, we learn how to accept our own humanness, which invites others to see their own humanness in us. And what's interesting, people are always hesitant to be vulnerable, but they love when others are vulnerable with, with them. Oh, they find that to be- <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, and I've seen it numerous times on this podcast. I mean, I can go back and look at the number of downloads and things such as that. When people are vulnerable on the show, really vulnerable, and they say something like, oh, my God, like, I mean, I'm sure today will probably be one of those days because you have beautifully demonstrated how vulnerable you were by saying, you know, so being an HIV positive man. Those are the moments people go, oh, it's like, oh, but wait, that's good for them. But I don't want, no, don't do this for myself. I can't be that. It's too scary. And the, the beauty in my mind of being vulnerable is when we see our truest self that helps us answer the question, who am I? Who am I truly? And not just who am I, but who am I being in this moment? Because I think they're situational who we are, mm-hmm. but they stem from the core of who we are. And oftentimes, I'm not sure we actually see that piece of ourselves. And the sooner, you know, Renee Brown talks a whole lot about this with all her vulnerability stuff. It's just amazing. But that little, that little step we take to say, okay, I'm going to say this, or I'm going to show up this way and be vulnerable because we don't know, you know, uncertainty. Hey, (laughs) uncertainty. She's one big and she's always going to be there. So, you know, if you can take nothing else away from, you know, some of the stuff we've been talking about is trust the uncertainty and know that that's part of your story too. It's always going to be a part of every one of our stories. So I know you do a lot of work with a lot of different people and I know you've got a program you're working on getting ready to launch. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this kind of finding your soulmate program you're working on right now, right? It's just a pretty easy call the find your soulmate fast. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about it is how to share your story on video for you to attract your partner. Mm. And what's interesting about this program is I am a student Mm. where I'm being taught by an expert in video. They call her the video diva. Uh (laughs) And she's teaching me on how to overcome my fears on how to show up on video. Mm. Because so it's an ongoing process of growth and learning. And I'm teaching others on how to share their story offline so they can share it online. And it's amazing on how that process is transformational Mm -hmm. because we get to address people's limited beliefs, any limited beliefs that they have around relationships, around about themselves and the world and transform them into supporting beliefs and revisit all of those moments that have shaped their belief system and making sure that they heal those limited beliefs associated with them mm-hmm. and start living for life from a place of supporting beliefs. Mm-hmm. And adding the video piece to it, that's where people are in action. Right. So at the end of the program, people find themselves really 
free from being seen for who they are. Mm. And the end product is that they know how to use video Mm -hmm. to talk in any social media platform. (laughs) That's amazing. And I use myself to show how it is to be vulnerable going through the process of learning on how to be on video myself. So it's pretty cool. Well, it is very cool. And as a speaker, and, and I do a fair share of video. In fact, I'm getting ready to record 30 different videos for a program I'm launching soon. It's interesting to watch yourself. And I remember the first few videos I shot, I'd show up with like my video persona. This is Rick. <laughs> it's like, okay, some of them were good. Some weren't so good. And then I remember when I first started doing the podcast, I'd show up with Rick. Here's the podcast, Rick. And then I started realizing, you know what? The ones that people really responded to, and I did it today, you know? So big confession time. I have somewhat of a script I write for each show when we start, but I kind of try to make it like as if it's just coming out of my mouth in that moment. And I've learned each time that I, you know, I always say, hello, Closet Busters, it's time. But the more I go, okay, guys, it's time. Let's do this. We're all going to come out. The more I just kind of relax and be who I am, that's my real story. That's who Rick really is. And I think the more we can do that in our lives, in every aspect of life, we will be able to be on camera or be on a podcast or be in front of a stage or be in front of someone we're very intimate with and just be who we are. So, so this is awesome. I'm just so curious to see this program when you launch it, because I think it's going to be so powerful and people can really see themselves and start to use this in so many different ways. Cause God knows there's a lot of people out there still searching for that soulmate. They want that person they can call their own. So uh, that's true. Yeah, it's very true. And Ray's not one who's just talking and doing this because he knows he's an expert. No, he's kind of living this himself. He's found his soulmate. He's got wedding nuptials just around the corner. So congrats on that, man. I'm so happy for you guys. Thank you. That's very cool. So if somebody wanted to really dive in and I'm going to throw you kind of a, kind of not a big question, but somewhat of a big question. If they were really trying to dive into this being, their most true self, as you, you know, brought up, you know, really trying to show up in the way that they're meant to show up. Where would you start to do the work with them, Ray? The first thing I do is to really assess their past, to really assess their saboteurs, all the negative thoughts Mm -hmm. and address those negative feelings, those negative thoughts and transform them into something that is life supportive. Well, you know, in in just the last few minutes, you said something when you're talking about beliefs, and I love the way you said it, taking those limiting beliefs to supporting beliefs. It's so, it sounds so simple and it is somewhat simple, but yet I know it's hard work. I mean, we, we have the limiting beliefs, which are just a bit to kind of get rid of. But once we realize, how can I take that limiting belief and flip it into something that supports me? Just in saying that question to yourself at least yeah. I believe begins to, sh- it starts the shift. How can I take this from here to here? It's a huge, huge shift in, in how we show up. And you know what's interesting with you? Ask people, what do you believe in? And people do not know what to say. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because they have adopted a belief system that is not theirs. And the second that you start really asking yourself, what do I believe in? And you know that for belief to be a belief, it has to be justified, be in service of a useful purpose, and it has to make you feel good. Yep. And revisiting your belief and really crafting those core beliefs of yours, that's when you start really thriving in life. But don't you think, we're going to wrap up here soon, which I hate because I could go talk to you for another 30 minutes, but we try to keep these really tight. But don't you think, that a lot of times the reason we don't do the shift mm-hmm. is simply because we haven't been told it's okay. You can yeah. change. You can go stand in your own beliefs. It's okay. In fact, mm-hmm. it's good. You have permission to go do this, but nobody per se, and I'm, I'm kind of generalizing here right now, but nobody has actually ever sat. I know nobody's ever sat me down until I started going through my training and and looking at deeper things and doing my own personal development, nobody had really ever said, yes, Rick, you have permission to have your own beliefs. <laughs> Very true. Very true. I mean, true. it's just not the way we've been socialized as humans. And I think in that space, that's 
one of the biggest things for those of us coming out of the closet is to anchor into, and again, I'm going to kind of bring up my book, frankly, my dear, I'm gay. It's one of the key tenets that I talk about quite a few places throughout the book of giving yourself the permission is some of the biggest part of the journey in coming out, giving yourself permission to be yourself, giving yourself permission to have your beliefs, giving yourself permission to not have to commit to somebody else's expectations of you. These are all permission granted slips, kind of like a hall pass, so to speak at school, you get the hall pass to go to the bathroom. Well, give yourself some hall passes to go through the journey. That is the coming out journey. A couple of things I want to do before we wrap it up here, Ray. Number one, it's your website. What's a way people could get in contact with you if they wanted to work on, especially with this new video thing, because I think that's going to be a really great hit for those of you who are just coming out, been out for a little while, wanting to be in the dating realm. So what's a good place for people to connect with you? A good place to connect with me is to go to my website at www.rayinnovation.com, which is R-A-Y-N-E-W-V-A-T-I-O-N.com. Awesome. And we will have that up on the show page too, folks. So if you didn't catch it, but it is Rayinnovation, R-A-Y-N-E-W-V-A-T-I-O-N.com. And I believe we're also going to have up on the show page a link to a little ebook that you've written called Five Secrets of Wildly Successful Professionals. So we're going to put that up on the show page as well so that you folks can grab that from Ray. It's kind of his gift for being on the show. But the last thing I want to cover here, Ray, is something that I always cover at the end of every show. If I were to pose the question to you, what would be your best piece of advice for someone who's in the closet and either in the closet, barely out of the closet, came out of the closet, what would be a piece of advice you'd love to leave our listeners with? The one advice I would like to leave them with is the first relationship that will always be with you is your relationship with yourself. So if you don't feel good about it, do something about it. Mm, so good. I always love that question because every guest gives such a great different be, answer. It's just should it, be just an indicator of what can become. Yeah. And so many things can become. I think the limiting beliefs, got to hate them, but they're part of what helps us grow. The more you can see what can become, the easier it will be for you to really, truly step out of the closet and be exactly who you're meant to be. Exactly, exactly. And, and care more about how you feel versus what you think. And if you don't mm. feel good... You know that you have to entertain thoughts that are different than what you're currently thinking. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Boy, I I tell you what, Ray, that was, you just gave us two beautiful nuggets of wisdom as we wrapped up the show here. I'm so thankful that you came on to spend some time with me and, and to be part of this. So I really appreciate you being here, brother. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm enjoying reading your book. It's pretty Pretty fascinating and uh, lots of great nuggets in it as well for your audience. So, oh, well, thank you so much, um, man. I appreciate that. So, thank you. And if you have enjoyed anything that Ray and I have shared or want to connect with or any of that stuff, you know, pass it along. You know, this isn't just the Rick show or, or Ray coming on and being a guest. This is, this is our show. It's our show as a humanity. So, take it and share it because somebody else may be able to use some of the insights and advice and challenges and or just hearing the stories of other people and one of the greatest ways to do that is you know to give us some love on whatever the platform is you're listening whether it be itunes stitcher or soundcloud those ratings and reviews don't just blow up our ego because we don't like to just blow up our ego we like to help people get to this and because you give us a good rating or review it helps us move up in the ranks and it gets us seen more And as most of you who are longtime listeners know, but if you're a first time listener, you can always connect with me on my Facebook page, The Coming Out Coach. You can connect with me at Twitter with at Rick Clemens, and that's C-L-E-M-O-N-S. And the hashtag for the show is Pound Coming Out Lounge. You can also connect with Ray on his Twitter account, which is rhippolite, R-H-I-P-P-O-L-Y-T-E. That's a great way to connect with him if you want to. Most of all, we just want you to just keep doing and being who you are, stepping into your story, being the person you're meant to be in this world. And as always, I always truly encourage each and every person to never stop stepping out, stepping up, and stepping into living your powerful truth. Until next week, we'll see you then on the Coming Out Lounge. I'm Rick Clemens, the Coming Out Coach, and have a great week, and we loved having you here. 
You've just experienced the Coming Out Lounge. Go online to www.comingoutlounge.com to learn more. And tune in again next week for more stories and tips for being true to yourself. 